Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel for another review. Today we have a 1991 New Holland CM274 to review. A very special and practical vehicle. As you can see, it has a snowblower attachment on the front of it. And so I'm wearing all of my snowblower gear today to be in character and to really fit the atmosphere of this particular vehicle. But before we get started for today, I would like to thank all of you who have subscribed for subscribing. The channel is reaching about 9,000 subscribers, which is a huge number, a big milestone, and I wanna thank all of you for making that possible. However, only about 3% of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. So if you could subscribe, it would be a huge help. It's free and you can always unsubscribe later. Also, I have a big channel announcement to make for you guys. I now have merchandise. If you're interested, you can go to the link in the description below. And if you need any new hats, shirts, or jackets, you can find it all right there. And also on that website is a good amount of General Motors apparel, so you can feel free to check that out as well if you're interested. And if you decide to purchase some of my merchandise, if you'd like to, you can email me a photo of you wearing the merchandise as well as your general location, and you may be featured on the YouTube channel. Anyways, without further ado, I'm sure you guys can't wait to see and check out this vehicle. So let's review the CM274. First, I'd like to walk you guys through the history of New Holland as well as the CM274. New Holland got its name from Abe Zimmerman, who opened up an equipment repair shop in New Holland, Pennsylvania, but he later founded the New Holland Machine Company in 1903 to help build agricultural equipment for the surrounding area. The company became very successful and grew throughout the decades to provide a variety of products of tractors and combines as well. Several different companies also either partnered or purchased the New Holland Company throughout the years, including an American business person, Henry Ford. What many people don't realize or know is that Henry Ford didn't just revolutionize the car industry, he also revolutionized the agricultural and farming industry as well. Henry Ford actually created his first tractor in 1907, which was called the Fordson. The Fordson was a cheaper and more efficient tractor than the competition, which made it easier for farmers to buy these tractors and use them rather than farming in the more traditional way, which was with horses. New Holland wasn't purchased by Ford until 1986, and soon after this, Ford was the first to sell CM274s. However, soon after this, Ford was trying to leave the farming industry, and they eventually sold their New Holland line to Fiat, who also had a long history with farming. Fortunately, Fiat continued to build these commercial mowers, and they continued to build them under two different models, the CM274 and the CM224. The 27 stood for 27 horsepower, while the 22 stood for 22 horsepower, and the 4 in the name stands for four-wheel drive. But the CM224 and 274 were eventually replaced in the late 90s by the MC28. But of course, New Holland does continue to exist today and builds many different products. Starting off the review with this CM274, let's talk about the front end and the different attachments you could get on this thing. As you can see, this one comes with the snowblower attachment about 52 inches wide. However, you could also get a lawnmower for the front, a grass collection system in the back. The front also could be attached with a five foot wide broom, a 60 inch wide blade, many different things that were practical. So you really only had to own one of these machines and have all of those different options at your disposal. However, I think this two stage snowblower is the coolest looking one of them all. It's a very impressive piece of machinery. Firstly, it is two stage. So what this means is it has this auger in the front pulling all the snow to the middle of the blade. And it has another blade in the back which actually shoots the snow out through the chute. A pretty impressive system for the time. And what's really nice about the snowblower is that it hydraulically moves up and down. You can move it up pretty high for storage or bring it down as low as you want, pretty much down to the ground. And if you take a look around, you would probably find a bunch of stones lying around in our grass. Uh, my dad didn't really pay attention sometimes and he scrapes all the stones in there and shoots them out into the grass. So now I have a fun chore of getting to rake them all back onto the driveway. Thank you, dad, for that chore. But what's really nice is this chute moves hydraulically left and right as well. A very handy thing. You don't have to get out of the blower to adjust it in the inclement weather. You can do it all from the comfort of inside of the cabin. 
And New Holland was also very concerned when it came to safety with this snow blower. There are actually several bolts on this side of the blower that are designed to strip if something large or heavy gets stuck inside of the auger itself. And there are also some pretty interesting <laughs> warning stickers throughout this entire snowblower. There is one towards the front that says danger and has a guy sticking his foot into the auger, it looks like, and it shows his toes getting chopped off. Uh, kind of graphic. However, that is not the most graphic sticker. On the side of the chute itself, there is a dude getting his arms chopped up and shot out through the chute as he's getting torn apart here by the machine. It's pretty amazing how awful that looks. I guess it's just meant to scare you to make sure you don't do that because you could just get your arms torn away from your body. There's also another photo here which shows uh, someone shooting a bunch of stones at their friend over there as they're running for their life. Uh, pretty interesting stickers, but I guess you gotta show everyone that this is a dangerous machine and it's important to be safe. And also on the front of this New Holland CM274, as you can see, there is a glass windshield up front for the enclosure. What's really nice is the front is glass and it's easy to see through. You do have an optional windshield wiper up front so you can, I guess, snow blow in the rain if you wanted to, which is kind of goofy, but you can. And if you take a look through the windshield, you can see there is a New Holland logo on the front of that pillar, as well as a light bulb. But the issue is the chute completely blocks it. So if you're gonna snow blow at nighttime, there's no way you're gonna see. However, there are some modifications on this machine to help with that. There are some very large LED lights on the front end of it here to light the way forward. Now moving along to the side of the CM274, um, one of the things to mention here is that New Holland didn't really uh, pay complete attention to the quality of this machine. Firstly, they only added this like little plastic cover and door here. It's made out of fabric. It's kind of faded over the years and doesn't look very good. It, I guess, does at least protect you somewhat from the wind. But what is cool about the door is, as you can see, it's a suicide door, so it opens up like a Rolls Royce or a really fancy Bentley or something like that. It's very luxurious looking, just not very luxurious feeling, but that's okay. Also, there was some rust on the bottom of the door here. Most of it was kind of taken off or replaced. However, you do kind of have to be careful to not get tetanus from this thing. Also, there are some pretty large wheels right here underneath the passenger compartment. However, these wheels are not the ones that turn. The wheels that turn are actually in the back. So it kind of turns like a forklift and it kind of makes it easier to get around tight spaces and to mow or to uh, use a snowblower around uh, tight turns and driveways like that. So pretty ingenious thinking on New Holland's part. But what's even more ingenious is their battery placement. On the other side of this New Holland, they have a battery underneath the engine compartment. It can actually be flipped out for easier access. There's a little pin you remove and then you can just swing it open. Unfortunately, I couldn't really figure out how to do it, but it is still a very handy and practical feature of this New Holland. And a couple more things to mention, there is an orange light on the roof of this New Holland, which is a very important thing. It helps other people know where you are. Very important to be safe, especially when driving a very dangerous machine like this. And there's also a little hookup here, probably to remove the roof off of the New Holland if you wanted to have an open air experience. Now moving along to the back side of the CM274. Firstly, this is where you'll find these counterweights on back. This is to help balance out this machine because the snowblower is extremely heavy. And if you lift it or lower it, sometimes the back end would actually lift on its own. So you've got to have these counterweights back here to keep that from happening. There is also several safety things here as well, including this safety orange triangle. So people once again can see you even more easily and you won't kill anyone. There is also a little red light back here as well, and it also has LED lights on the back. That's a pretty nice addition to have for when you want to drive this thing at nighttime. Next, let's take a look underneath the hood of the New Holland CM274 and see what is here. So, as you can see, the hood is actually very easy to open. It's actually rear hinged for sportiness, and it doesn't even have a release. And very much like the Gator I brought to you guys last year, this is kind of like a rear engine, mid-engine layout for sportiness and uh, just to make this thing a little bit more special. Anyways, under here is the 77.4 cubic inch 
three cylinder diesel engine. This produces about 27 horsepower, which is much more compared to the measly 22 horsepower in the CM224. So nice to see the big boy engine under here. Also back here is the 10.6 gallon fuel tank. Good amount of fuel, so you won't have to be stopping to refuel. But what's really cool, speaking about fuel, being a diesel, you typically don't want these to run out of fuel because then you get air into the fuel lines and it just won't run. However, this has an automatic bleed system, so the air will actually automatically bleed out of the lines. You can just continue going if you run out of fuel. I don't really know how it works, but it certainly does sound pretty cool and practical. Next, let's start up the CM274 and see how that three-cylinder sounds. Now that we've taken a good look at the exterior of the CM274, let's go ahead and take a look at the inside. You guys will be impressed. So, taking a look at the interior of the CM274, uh, it is pretty nice in here actually. Very roomy, very easy to get in and out of, although there isn't really a uh, running board, but you can step on this wheel. Um, overall, a very nice appearance. I like that the interior column here matches the blue of the exterior, same color there. It also has a little bit of bragging here. It says four wheel drive here, so you or I guess no passenger, you can see that this is four wheel drive as you get inside. And that's also something to mention, you can't really fit anyone else in here. It's really only designed for one person. There's only one seat in here, but you do have at least enough room for yourself to uh, move around a little bit, which is nice. So let's get inside of the CM274 and see how comfortable it is. Oof. There we go, inside of the CM274. The most important thing is uh, being comfortable because you're gonna spend a lot of time in this thing, just mowing grass, snow blowing, brushing, whatever attachment you have. So it has to be comfortable in here. And the seat is actually pretty soft. Um, it has a good amount of cushion. As you can see, it moves up and down. There are adjustments for the seat behind it on the top of it. You can also flip up the uh, armrests here just to make it a little bit more comfortable for you. And this seat is also pretty safe and convenient. It has a safety belt. So in case a few happen to roll over this thing, you won't go flying out. And the seat can also be lifted up for storage, which is pretty nice as well. And in front of me, there is a three spoke steering wheel here. There's a New Holland logo in the center of it. However, I am disappointed there isn't a horn here. Unfortunately, this vehicle is supposed to be very safe. You should have a horn so you can warn people if they're coming towards you that you're there. Behind the steering wheel is our gauges. They all are very large, very easy to read, which is important. There's a tachometer here, an engine hour meter, our fuel gauge, engine temperature. There are some warning lights up top, which include includes an oil temperature light, our glow plug light for the diesel engine, as well as a battery light. Also behind the steering wheel is an orange little lever. This is actually for the speed control or cruise control. If you pull the handle down when you're moving, it'll actually set you at that speed so you can take your foot off of the gas pedal. Very nice to have, especially if you're moving at a constant speed and don't want your foot to get too tired. And there's also another orange lever right here in front of me. This is for our parking brake. How it's supposed to work is you kind of push in the brakes or the parking brake on the right and you lift it up and then lock it in place. However, this one is unfortunately broken, which is probably not good, but that's okay, <laughs> hasn't killed anyone yet. And then to the left of that is our ignition switch. And when you want to go and start the new Holland CM274, you do have to twist the key to the left in order to light up the glow plugs, and that'll heat up the diesel fuel to help it light. Diesel fuel has a higher flash point than gasoline, so you kind of have to do that with most diesel vehicles. And below the ignition switch is a heater. It has a switch on top, which helps you to turn on or off the heater. There are several different levels of heat, I believe, but it's actually a very nice addition to have for a snowblower such as this. But what's really interesting about the CM274 is that it has 
has a forward pedal and a reverse pedal. These pedals are located on the right and they make moving forward and backwards really easy to do. You don't have to mess with changing gears or anything. You just move your foot to these pedals no matter what direction you want to go. But another interesting pedal situation with this vehicle is that it has two different brake pedals. And the reason why this has two different brake pedals is so that it is easier to make turns. The left pedal is for the brake on the left front wheel and the right pedal is for the brake on the right front wheel and you can use these individually to pivot on either of those two front wheels to make an even sharper turn than normal. Very ingenious thinking on New Holland's part. There are also plenty of levers on this interior to control everything. To the furthest left there is a lever here to go into your low, high, or neutral gears and there's another one here to engage four-wheel drive manually. But the cool thing is this vehicle actually has automatic four-wheel drive. If it notices that one of the wheels is slipping, it'll automatically engage four-wheel drive and then disengage it when it realizes that you have traction. And there are also two more levers on my right. The one in front controls the adjustment or the angle of the snowblower up front, while the one on the back controls the angle of the hydraulic chute. And there's also a yellow lever over here. This one is to engage whatever attachment it is you have. There's also a switch here to turn on the original headlight to this vehicle, as well as a knob which controls the speed that the hydraulic things move at. And finally, the lever with the orange handle here is to adjust the RPMs, move it forward to increase the RPM or move it down to decrease it. So you kind of manually have to adjust the RPM yourself. On the floor, there is a round button. If you kick that with your foot, you can actually engage the differential. I don't know exactly how this works because this one is unfortunately broken, but uh, anyways, it is there at least, so it helps you to get out of sticky situations. There are also a few things in the ceiling to make note of. Firstly, there is a fan here. I don't believe that this is stock. I think that someone may have added this, but it still is a nice thing to have if you're using this in the summertime with the cab. There is a LED light up here, which is added. This wasn't original to this vehicle, but it is here. And there are also some switches up here. One of them is to turn on the LED lights for the front, another one for the LED lights in the back. There's also a switch to turn on and off that little orange light on the roof, as well as a switch to turn on the windshield wiper, which does cover most of the windscreen up front, which is nice, easy to see out of. There is some 12 volt outlets here, as well as a switch to turn them on and off. That is a modification, but it's a nice modification, as well as the other ones have been added just to modernize this vehicle and make it easy to use and pretty much bring it into the 20 first century. However, there is a little bit of danger associated with this roof. There are some little screws up top pointing through the roof, maybe to hold in the orange light up top. I'm not really sure, but you got to be careful. You don't want to stab your hand on one of those screws and once again, get tetanus or something. And there are a couple warning stickers up here. One of them is telling you to help conserve fuel. And another one is telling you to use ear protection when using this vehicle. So good reminders, once again, just to be safe and to be mindful. And the last thing to talk about while I'm in here is what you'll find under the seat. And under here is this block of wood. Uh, this did not come with the vehicle, but my dad got it from somewhere and he uses this to get snow unjammed from the inside of the chute, which will happen occasionally. And it's very safe and good thinking on his part. So he uses this rather than his hand to get all that snow out from in there. So. Very handy thing to have in your snowblower. I highly recommend it. Now that we've taken a good look at the exterior and the interior of the CM274, let's go ahead and take it for a drive. So, I will say, um, there's a couple of issues with uh, this vehicle. Firstly, that the uh, four-wheel drive doesn't work, so I'm not going to be able to show that off to you guys today. But also, the power steering intermittently comes on and off, so it's not necessarily always working. So, you kind of got to really twist the wheel sometimes to get this thing to turn. Although this uh, vehicle does have a cab, probably my biggest disappointment with it is that it is still fairly loud. It really uh, is a little bit unpleasant when you're on the inside of it. 
and you really can't hear much. So it makes sense why it uh, suggests that you use hearing protection when you drive this thing. But also, it doesn't really seem to be all that fast. Even if I was to uh, rev this up more, it just really doesn't uh, have that much go to it. And I will test out the uh, cruise control or speed control real quick, see how it goes. Oh, I must not have done that right. On. Set. Oh, I don't think it works. I don't think it works. So I probably should explain why exactly we have this thing. Um, obviously the snow blow, but how we came across it. Um, my dad bought it about a year ago, actually, a little over a year ago. Um, but it is kind of a funny story. So he bought a Ford CM274 from a neighbor of ours several years ago. It has the uh, mower blades on it, so it's for mowing grass. And my dad was really interested in buying a snowblower version so he could, of course, be in that vehicle and snowblow the driveway rather than using something else. And he found this on Facebook Marketplace and he was under the impression that the actual C274 didn't run, so he was just gonna buy the attachment. But when he got there, the guy told him, the seller said, oh yeah, this still runs, everything's fine, you know, a few things here and there don't work, but yeah, it runs. So my dad just ended up buying this and he doesn't have to worry about switching out the attachments, but my dad has never been so excited before to use a piece of machinery. When he bought it, he was just so thrilled because he really loves the uh, Ford version that he has for mowing grass, and he was just excited it's had a cab and a heater and all this other stuff. This one has everything that he wanted, and it is fun. I will say, it is pretty fun to drive this thing around. Alrighty, guys, let's do a quick zero to top speed test. Let me hit both of the brakes here. Let's rev it up a little bit more, too. Get some of that power, the 27 horsepower. Here we go, top speed. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, that's probably one of the quickest accelerating vehicles to top speed I've ever driven. Oh, let's test out that turning radius. Power steering is not going. <laughs> it does turn though. And I would uh, test out the uh, individual brakes as well, but I don't want to either tear up the grass or break something. So I don't think I'm going to give that a shot today. But I will say, although this thing is a little loud, a little rusty, a little rough, not everything works, this is still a very nice and practical vehicle. And it's, uh, honestly, I gotta say, the Cadillac of snowblowers. 